Law, Kim or Lu Zhen, 1867-1919. Law Kim, Lu Zhen, was a pioneer medical missionary in southern China and the first Adventist Chinese national to return to serve in his homeland. Early Life in America Lu Zhen, also known as Law Kim or Charlie Kim Wen was born on May 19, 1867, in Xinhui, Sunoi, Guangdong, China. In 1882, he arrived in the United States seeking an education. He and his father settled in Mariposa, California, where his father eventually became wealthy in the merchandise business. Lockheed began to work for the Hutchins, a Christian family and started learning English from the Bible. When his family discovered his interest in Christianity, they tried to remove him from all Christian influences. Determined to learn English, Law arranged to go to school in Merced, California. There he attended Adventist meetings held by Frank T. Lam and Lucius H. Church, and was baptized. He spent some time with the Lucius Church family in Fresno and then attended Heldsburg College. There he became acquainted with Ellen White, and she encouraged him to study medicine at the California Medical College in San Francisco, where he graduated in 1900. One, San Francisco paper wrote that he was the star of the commencement exercises. Dr. Laura turned to Fresno and began a medical practice there, operating a private sanitarium between 1901 and 1904. He had apparently committed himself to return to China as early as 1902. Awaiting his appointment to China, he studied at the Postgraduate Medical School and Hospital in Chicago, where he married Edith Mary Miller, born August 12, 1877, in Battle Creek, Michigan, on September 13, 1904. They had known each other at Heldsburg College and had worked together in Fresno. It is reported that Edith asked Ellen White about her relationship with Dr. Law, and White replied that Dr. Law was a good human being and a wonderful professional and that Edith should accept his friendship. Because they could not marry in California due to anti-miscegenation laws, their marriage was conducted in Chicago, Illinois, by A.T. Jones. The Associated Press picked up the news of their marriage and spread it nationally. One small Michigan paper published an article on the marriage headlined, Weds a Chink. A report from Chicago quoted Edith as saying, I married Dr. Keem because I love him and because I know he loves me. At first, during our courtship, I felt twinges of race prejudice, but this soon passed away. If a man and woman love they should marry. Prejudices of race or color ought not to stand in the way of the supreme passion that guides all our lives. Dr. Law was quoted as saying, My wife and I talked over the matter of our racial differences during our courtship. We came to the conclusion that we loved each other, and that, we felt, was superior to every objection. Mission Service in China While waiting to go to China, the laws worked together to start a Chinese mission in San Francisco. Though the General Conference did not have the funds in place to provide for the laws in China, they decided to send them in faith that the funds would be provided. The laws departed from San Francisco and arrived in Hong Kong on July 26, 1905. Shortly afterward, the Vermont Conference voted to support a missionary in China. The General Conference accepted the funds for the laws, who became the fifth Adventist missionary family to work in China. Dr. Law was also the first Chinese national to return as Adventist medical missionary. After a few weeks in Hong Kong and then Guangzhou, then known as Canton, Dr. Law visited his home village where old friends and relatives crowded around to see him. The Laws spent a year and a half in Guangzhou with E. H. Wilbur and J. N. Anderson. Both of the Laws studied Cantonese. Early in 1907, the Laws went to Foshan, then known as Fat Shan, to begin pioneer work. While traveling from Hong Kong to Fat Shan, Dr. Law chanced to meet Dr. Wu Tingfang, 1842-1922, the former Chinese ambassador to the United States. In their conversation, Wu was critical of the medicines given by the medical profession and testified to Dr. Law of the value of a vegetarian diet. Dr. Law assured him that they were in agreement, as he rarely gave medicine and encouraged vegetarianism. Wu was impressed, and they agreed to remain in contact with each other. Some years later, Dr. Wu then serving as the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Southwest China Constitutional Government, wrote to his connections in the Guangxi, Guangxi, recommending Dr. Law's medical work and suggesting that he be given help in establishing a medical institution in Nanning. Dr. Wu, a strict vegetarian, had visited some Adventist sanitariums in the United States and had been greatly pleased with their methods of treating the sick. His contact with Dr. Kellogg and Adventist ideas of healthy living were part of the reason he was interested in starting a similar work in China. We supported the Chinese Revolution in 1911 and held high posts in the Republican administration. At Fat Shan, Dr. Law opened a dispensary and a chapel in a central part of town. At some point, he was ordained, 
and it was in this capacity that he baptized 30 believers in Fushan before returning to America on furlough in 1912. Among those baptized were Dr. Wang Xiu Lung and his brother, who later became an ordained pastor. Dr. Wang Shui Lung then took Dr. Law's place as the director of the dispensary in Fat Shan. Upon his return to China in 1913, Dr. Law was posted to Wuzhou, then known as Wuzhou. He began work in Nanning, the capital city of Guangxi Province, in 1914. He was eventually joined there by H. B. Parker and P. V. Thomas and his wife. Dr. Law's missionary work in Nanning was successful, and he opened a dispensary next to the Mission S. Chapel. Like other Adventist medical establishments, it was known in Chinese as the Little Eden Dispensary. The dispensary was a financial success, and the missionary work developed a good reputation. Preparations were underway to build a larger dispensary. James Shi of College View, Nebraska, had donated a large sum for the building of a hospital in Shanghai. That hospital could not be built, so $1,200 in gold was to be used to enlarge and equip the dispensary in Nanning. Dr. Law helped raise an additional $2,200 in Nanning for the construction. On May 2, 1919, Dr. Law became ill. After only four days of illness, he died on May 5, 1919. Reports stated that his death was the result of blood poisoning. Funeral services were conducted by Rev. D.T. Loader, associated with the Church Missionary Society, and Mr. Robert S. Burris of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. The dispensary in Nanning eventually developed into the Nanning Seventh day Adventist Hospital. At the end of the Sino Japanese War, Nanning Hospital, which was occupied by the Japanese military, was returned to the Seventh day Adventist Church. To honor the selfless sacrifice of the pioneer, a chapel was erected in 1945 and named La Kim Memorial Chapel. After 1951, the hospital was taken over by the People's Republic government and it became the first People's Hospital of Nanning. A 2014 commemorative booklet called Dr. Law's Dispensary The Beginning of Modern Medical Services in the City of Nanning, Guangxi. After Law Kim's death, Edith and her family remained in China until November 22, 1919. The family then returned to Fresno. Edith eventually moved to St. Helena, California. She died at the age of 102 in Angwin, California on September 11, 1979. There were five children in the family. Legacy. Even though his 14 years of mission service were cut short by illness that costed his life, La Kim is fondly remembered by the people of southern China where he established two hospitals, one in Foshan and one in Nanning. In addition to his medical service, many also remembered him for his untiring pastoral ministry in the southern provinces of Gagdong and Guangxi.